and, and, she's, and she turns around and says, Jack, what's going on here? I said, well, Phyllis, I don't, what do you mean? She says, I don't know. I'm standing in front of these paintings, and I'm just crying. I can't stop crying. I said, well, Phyllis, has this ever happened to you before? You go to galleries all the time. And she said, no. I said, well, guess what? You've been touched. And that's a rare occurrence for all of us in our encounters on a day-to-day -day basis. So it, I've experienced this. This isn't some ephemeral conceptual idea. I'm not interested in conceptual. I'm interested in actual. And all actual things have wonderful concepts behind them. But if it stops at the conceptual, it's not there. And that's the problem with the world today. People are confusing virtual with actual. People are going to be seeing this thing on the web thinking, wow, they know Matt Gleason and they know Jack Rutberg. Well, bullshit. We could both be, you know, hack murderers for all, you know, they know. He but, knows! <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but really, I, 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 I get I, your I, point and I get your cynicism because I would argue your point almost all the time. But I think it's so important to give people the notion that there are possibilities and that's what sustains us. I, I want to get an actual discount at your gallery. Is that <laughs> <laughs> done? Done. But it's all we do. <laughs> because if, I, if, if things were sold at, at their true worth they, compared to what the norm is, oh, then we no. are discount. But no, I, you know, I, I wanna, there's I wanna, great things to celebrate in the city. The problem is that it is not part of the story. You know, well, then, but I, and I believe the reason it is kept out of the story is so that people can maintain control. And oh, sure. uh, that's that elitism demands it. My, my pet peeve, my personal pet peeve, is if you simply look at the demographics of Los Angeles and the fact that the town is already 50% Latino and the fact that maybe in my lifetime, if uh, you don't kill me, um, <laughs> uh, it could be up to 75% Latino, I would argue that the local institutions primarily are completely ignoring a very rich, not only a rich historical tradition, uh, which in and itself is manipulated by every, uh, by every level of society. You know, you can talk to graffiti artists who will be like, you don't know your history, man. You know, Skater was a better tagger <laughs> in 1993. And, and, and you know what? That is a history. Yeah, I, it I, is not my history. But it, but it's it, not the one I want to celebrate. But, and that's where the difference but lies. It's, but it's the institution. But, hist but it's never brought up by anybody who's legitimately saying, yeah, this is the history. Isn't it cool? It's always brought up by somebody saying, I own the history. you got to come through me. I'm the bottleneck. But you know what, Matt? We live in a place where the official word is put out there. This is a, Los Angeles is a city of parallel universes. And we all bring our own experiences and have our own experiences. I refuse to be so cynical as to be paralyzing because I get to have those wonderful engagements that are nourishing. Jack, and you're, I'll sustain you, that. you're I mean, east of the 110, I don't know. Well, you know, it happens. It can happen everywhere. And you know what? This notion of the shiny, trophy, pedestal-placed artist is nonsense. As you know, you listen, you've met artists. You know they're, they're in there. It's grunt work. They are left between them and that canvas or whatever the medium is. They are having a very private dialogue. The fact that it's private and the fact that they're bleeding doesn't make it art. Out of all those thousands and thousands and thousands of picture makers, there will always be a few artists. That's, it's always been that way. Today, you can market anything so everyone gets equal play. And it's just bullshit. It, 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 there really, uh, it has always been the world of a very, very, very few. If you get an art history book that was published in the, uh, say, which would have been contemporary, a, a book that was published in 1920s and look at their contemporary art, you won't have heard of any of those people. Where were they when Van Gogh was painting? Where were they with Soutine? Where were they with Giacometti and all these various people? There, there's it actually took a, time. It there, took time. Actually, speaking of art history, there's a Three Stooges episode that takes place <laughs> in an art school. <laughs> and it was actually filmed God, I missed in the mid-30s. <laughs> well, they end up getting into a fight with the paint and the clay, you know. And they sell the painting, but, I'm sure. But, <laughs> but there's not one abstract painting in, in the thing. And I'm thinking, this they actually captured on film, regardless of the antics of Larry, Moe, and Curly, like, 
where the contemporary situation was. And so what happens is people look back at those history books published in the 20s or 30s and say, oh, they were wrong. They didn't include the Surrealists. But for them, you know, so what, we're wrong now. We are wrong now. In fact, because there is no right. There, we are wrong. There is no, art is everything, and there's no body... Postmodernism. No, I, I, I actually am, am no quite, central not a truth. fan of it at all. No, but, but I, you just articulated no, no, it. But I, 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 the, that's my argument. I mean, I'm, I'm fighting against oh. that. Oh. But, but look, there is a... I can give you... I, no one has ever charted this out for me, and I've come to a, an understanding in my own mind, accurate or otherwise, I can kind of trace why L.A. is in this kind of insipid realm and how the contemporary art world followed. And that started back in the 30s and 40s, 40s really, in L.A. Yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah. we're not no, going to go look, through look the at your, Look thing. at your watch. But oh, the, no. point, the, point, the point is that modern art in Los Angeles, censorship of it was virulent, uh -huh. virulent. What happened in the, where the academy shifted dramatically was after the veterans came back from the war, the GI Bill was there. They all went to art school. There was an environment where you could not teach abstraction. It was censored. Artists were literally, there were hearings here at City Hall where artists were accused of being communists because their abstract paintings were, in quotes, secret military installation maps and they were tools of the Kremlin. This was the environment. So when Artists came out of those art schools after the war and then into the 60s. They were looking for something new. They had nothing here with tooth. They, they looked east, that shiny thing, and pop art. That was easy, pop and, and this cooler sensibility because, you know what? There was no content. It was easy. It wasn't going to ruffle any feathers. It, it wasn't going to deal with all that censorship. So you're talking about we are suffering the fate today in this very, I, I really shorthanded this, but... We are suffering the fate today of some 30, 40, 50 years, really, really 50 years of a kind of censorship which has introduced a generation of academicians that haven't got a clue what a painting is. But they were communists! Those sons of bitches should have been on their ankles and beaten with sticks! <laughs> it's probably a great place to end this. <laughs> but, but, you know... Nathan, I mean, uh, uh, listen, three, what? three minutes. I've got one. <laughs> I, I've got the answer, and that is really people just need to go to the galleries and argue against what they don't feel. I went to the Ga Culver City galleries recently, and I swear to you, I thought they all went to a tattoo parlor to get their... Uh, uh, aesthetic chops. I, it, it, it's like the, re have they the reason. Ever no, seen but the re a painting? the reason the people are turning to the tattoo shops and to graffiti. And I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm just saying that they are. It is a reality. And the reason they are is because there are completely unsatisfying experiences at the institutions, at the galleries, in the artist studios. Because everybody's in line to be a rock star for a stage that right. doesn't exist. Mentorship is the thing that's missing. And the only yeah, the only mentorship do... the only mentorship is going on is when a fifty year old, sixty year old, gray haired art professor can bang the twenty five year old little arts tart, you know. So I that's that one. That's the mentorship. Yeah. Well you never see you're not an academia. Academia <laughs> only exists for these old guys to get laid. <laughs> Oof, God. Well, Keep your daughters out of those art schools, they'll shut down in a week. Those guys will be like, huh? I just gotta talk to guys? When I was an art, I, I was a painter 30 years ago, and the professor's like, who did this painting at the crit? Here was a crit. Some girl would raise his hand, he'd get her up there and touch her and everything. Who's, whose painting is this? Mine. Keep working hard. Next. He's looking to touch the girls. Ugh. I guess I was lucky to actually be inspired by some real artists and paintings as opposed to those kinds of actors. Better, rather than be inspired, I have been enraged and I feel that the fuel for that fire has allowed the LA art world to glow much more brilliantly than one person patting me on the head and saying, good job. Well, it's your time to celebrate some substance when you find it. There isn't any. Well. All right. Say goodbye. We're wrapping up. I goodbye. Think... All wrapped up. Is that it? Good night. Woo. God damn, my good. back is killing yeah, me. That was great. I was getting, really? Oh, yeah. Was... I was about to punch him.